In this video, you and I are genetics counselors. We have just been approached by two parents who are worried that their newborn child is suffering from a genetic disease, that something is wrong with that child's chromosomes, its DNA. So what you and I did is we went into one of the nuclei in that child's cells and we pulled out all of the chromosomes inside of it. And we took those chromosomes and we spread them out so we could get a better look at them and see if there was anything wrong with them. We call this display of chromosomes a karyotype. Now, if the child is healthy, we would expect it to have two copies of each type of chromosome. One copy from mom and one copy from dad. Furthermore, we would expect in each of these pairs of chromosomes that the chromosomes would be approximately the same length and provide the instructions for building the same types of traits. For instance, these chromosome ones here, we would expect to both provide the instructions for building brain proteins. These chromosome twos, we would expect would both provide the instructions for building gut proteins. Because these chromosomes are the same length and provide instructions for the same types of traits, we call them homologous pairs. Homo meaning same. So let's go through and see if this child has 23 homologous pairs of chromosomes, if they're all the same length. Number one, we looked at already. We can imagine if these two chromosomes were straightened out, they'd be about the same size. So these two are healthy. Chromosomes number twos, same deal. Chromosome number three, yep. Chromosome four, solid. Chromosome number five, however, it looks like one of these chromosomes is too short or one of them is too long. They're different sizes. So how long is a number five chromosome supposed to be? Well, if you look carefully, you'll notice that the chromosomes are arranged from biggest to smallest. Biggest being chromosome number one getting smaller as we go through. So chromosome number five should be a little bit shorter than number four and a little bit longer than number six. This chromosome on the left here, perfect size. This one on the right is too short. It's got a piece missing from it. And we say that chromosome number five has suffered a deletion. We can keep going and see that number six chromosomes are healthy. Number seven chromosomes are both the same length and healthy. Number eight, same deal. Number nine again, they're different lengths though. Either one is too long or one is too short. Well, again, we would expect a number nine to be a little bit shorter than eight and a little bit longer than 10, a length in between. We can see this one on the right is solid and the one on the left is too long. We say that a piece of DNA has gotten added into it and that it suffered an insertion. A piece has been inserted in. Now we can keep going. Chromosomes number 10, healthy of the same length. Chromosome number 11, hmm. All right, well again, it looks like a piece is either too big or too long. They're different sizes. And if we look ahead to chromosome number 12, same deal. It looks like one is a little bit shorter than the other. Now, we might be tempted to say that 11 has an, inser uh, an insertion and 12 has a deletion. But if you look carefully and you look at the different colors on the chromosomes, the different patterns on the chromosomes, we can work backwards and predict that chromosome 11 and chromosome 12 must have crossed over and swapped pieces. We call this type of mutation a translocation. Trans literally meaning cross. So these two chromosomes have crossed locations with each other. We can keep going and see if this child has any more mutations. Looking at chromosome 13s, they both appear to be the same size and healthy. Same with 14. 15s, they all appear healthy until we get to chromosome 21. 
Now, this child is supposed to have two copies of each chromosome, one from mom and one from dad. So how did mom and dad build a child with three copies of chromosome 21? Well, normally, parents have two copies of each chromosome. But when it comes time to make a child, they split those two up, and each donates one, one from mom and one from dad. Now, in the case of this child, that didn't happen. When it came time to split up their chromosomes, one parent split up, but the other parent's chromosomes got stuck together. So instead of donating one like it was supposed to, that parent donated two. And the child ended up with three copies of chromosome 21. We say this non-separation of chromosomes is called a non-disjunction. Disjunction literally meaning separation. And because the child ended up with three of chromosome 21, we say its disease is trisomy 21. Tri meaning three, somy meaning chromosome, and 21 of the 21st chromosome. This is more commonly referred to as Down syndrome. There's one last thing that we can determine from this child's chromosomes, and that's the child's gender. If you look at these last two chromosomes, you'll notice that they do not have a number assigned to them. Instead, they have the letter X and Y. If the child gets an X from its mom and a Y from its dad, the Y chromosome will turn it into a boy. If a child gets two X's, one from mom and one from dad, the child will develop as female. General rule of thumb, if there's a Y, it's a guy.